Hello everyone and welcome back to our emergency series. This is number 7 of 31, Mayday 7. Can you believe we're already one week in? So comment if you are 7 for 7 so far. Alright, so this is our last engine failure scenario. So we've done engine failure with runway remaining. We've done engine failure low altitude, no runway remaining. We've done partial engine failure. And now this one is for a complete engine failure during cruise. So now compared to engine failure on takeoff or climb out, losing an engine at cruise feels like a luxury. I mean, at cruise, you'll still follow the same steps, but you have a bit more time to analyze the situation. So first, of course, is airspeed. So we'll pitch for best glide. Now, initially, we're not intensely focused on the airspeed indicator, right? But establish the glide pitch angle and then trim. Two or three trims should be able to get you close. And then next, of course, is the best place to land. Now, a good pilot will, during cruise, always be keeping an eye out, you know, for best places to land. So potentially, if this happens, right, you already have a spot picked out, which puts you one step ahead in this game. And potentially, your iPad or avionics might have like a glide ring around your aircraft, which shows approximately how far you can glide. Now, of course, this glide ring likely shows where you will hit the ground, you know, assuming if it is 100% accurate. So if the ring like barely touches an airport, you won't make it to the runway unless everything is perfectly lined with your inbound track, right? And even that is hoping everything works out. So if you are referencing that, give yourself some margin, you know. Ideally, if you are gliding to some field, you want to set yourself up to be on a downwind base and final, right? So you're targeting to be a beam your touchdown point at a thousand feet AGL to set yourself up for a power off 180 to your landing spot. Which brings up another point, you know, if not landing at an airport, how do you know what a thousand feet AGL actually is to set yourself up for, right? Well, you really don't. You could estimate by the surrounding known elevations but you could easily be off by a few hundred feet, right? Especially over hilly terrain. And those hundreds of feet are critical in this situation. So plan conservative. It's always easier to shed altitude if you need to, right? Then the checklist. So at altitude, you have time to be more thorough with your checklist, right? Instead of just doing things by memory or by feel at low altitude, you have time to actually run the checklist. And also you have time to think, you know, did you make any configuration changes recently which could impact this? Like, did you switch the fuel tanks? You could always undo any recent changes and that's a good idea to see if that helps improve your situation. So if nothing works to restart the engine, then you're committed to an off-field landing or an on-field landing if you got an airport handy. So there may also be a checklist for a force landing. So you would want to run through that checklist also. So that's great, you know, knowing what to do when your engine fails. But how about preventing an engine failure to begin with, right? That sounds like an even better idea. So as a pilot, what can you do to minimize your chances of actually having an engine failure? So I would say it breaks down into two categories, right? So maintenance and then the operation of your aircraft. So for maintenance, if you are able to precisely monitor your engine parameters, you are one step ahead of a potential engine failure, right? Long-term trends of oil temperatures, pressure, cylinder head temperatures, right? These are all good indications of the health of the engine. So to do this adequately, you would need like a digital engine monitor, and then you're able to precisely monitor short and long-term trends. You know, counter this on the opposite side of the scale where you have an analog gauge, especially on an aircraft that you rent, you know, you don't really have any idea if what you are seeing is normal or abnormal. And then, you know, another item in the maintenance bucket would be having an extra particular um, carefulness on a pre-flight after the aircraft has been in the shop for maintenance. You know, both on the pre-flight inspection and then also during your run-up, right? You want to be a little extra particular in these cases. And then maybe one last thing is just, you know, performing proper and timely maintenance on your aircraft as required. Now for the operation side of things, there are a few things you can do here to minimize your chance of an engine failure as well, right? Similar to the trend monitoring, you know, we mentioned on the maintenance side, actual in-flight monitoring of the oil temperature, pressure, cylinder head temperatures, things like that, you know, that's valuable as well. Don't forget to include these things in your scan. And if you see something start 
to get a little bit out of line, which you aren't able to explain, then maybe it's best to divert and then investigate it, you know, on the ground. So in line with your scan, keep an eye on the fuel, right? There's always a number of engine failures every year due to fuel exhaustion. And like these are almost 100% avoidable. And speaking of fuel, make sure you take the fuel samples before your flight, clear out any contaminants prior to your flight, right? Contaminants cause engine failures as well. So there you go, complete engine failure at cruise. Hope this doesn't happen to you, but better than having an engine failure on takeoff with no runway of remaining, right? So thanks everyone for watching day seven. Looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow on day eight and fly safe.